The CB8 board you see here has been equipped with two circular connectors and one DB15 connector. In this clip, we'll demonstrate how to set up the CableEye software to recognize these connectors and show them on the screen with the correct pin numbers. Standard CableEye plug-in boards like this CB3 include a jumper block that automatically identifies this board to the software. Once CableEye's software knows that the CB3 is attached, it loads an internally stored lookup table for the CB3, showing how its pins are wired to the test points along the front of the tester. The lookup table also includes the label that should appear on the screen for each pin. We refer to this lookup table as a pin map. All standard CB boards for CableEye have built-in pin maps in the main software, which activate automatically as you insert and use the different boards. However, when you connect a custom-built fixture to CableEye, like the one shown at the beginning of this clip, you need to create a custom pin map for it to obtain the proper connector graphics and pin labels. We provide an optional program called PinMap for customers who need to interface their own custom fixtures to CableEye. The PinMap software lets you create what we call map files for your custom interfaces. To demonstrate how PinMap works, we'll use the arrangement shown here, with a standard CB3 board on the left and a customized CB8 board on the right. We'll use the probe to touch pins on the connectors, one pin at a time, as we step through the pin assignment table. All custom maps you create are stored in the Maps folder, which resides inside CableEye's software folder. I'll start the pin map program by double-clicking its icon. Create a new map file by clicking the document icon. Let's name this file custom underscore one. Notice that the new document we created turns yellow, indicating that new information is present which has not yet been stored to disk. Click the diskette icon to save it. The cable we wish to test has a DB37 female connector on one side and a 24 pin female circular connector on the other. For this cable, we'll use a standard CB3 board on the left and one of the circular connectors on the custom board attached to the right. To begin, we'll place the graphic for the 24-pin circular connector on the right side of the screen by clicking the R button for right side and choosing the connector from this list. We now see a grid appear for the circular connector. The left column shows the pin number on the circular connector graphic. The next column, labeled relative test point, shows the test point to which each pin is assigned. In this example, the absolute test point column next to it will be exactly the same, having the same numbers. Finally, the right column is an optional pin label you can use if you'd like to override the generic pin number shown in the left column. To start making the map, we click the Build tab. For this circular connector, we see reference pins along the left side. When CableEye draws the graphic during actual operation, the empty circle will be filled with the pins in their proper geometric position. Now we'll click the Pencil button to start editing. With the CableEye test fixture connected to the computer and the probe in place, we'll click the red area to open a, ch open a channel to the tester. Then, we'll click Scan to begin scanning the probe. Because this cable has only two connectors, the simple pin numbers on each connector are usually sufficient for pin labels. However, if this were a wire harness with multiple connectors, we would want to include a connector identifier with each pin number. I'll do that here just to demonstrate the process. We will simply add a connector identifier in this box, let's say J2 colon, the starting pin number here, and the amount by which we will increment each pin number as we touch the probe to the pins. Because there's no shield on this plastic circular connector, I'll click 
in the row for pin 1 to start. We're now ready to begin touching the probe to the pins. Each time the program properly registers a pin number, it beeps once. I'll just continue doing this until all 24 pins have been scanned. What I'm doing, even though you can't see it, is moving the probe from pin to pin, starting at pin 1, going to pin 2, then to pin 3, and so forth, to follow exactly the sequence you see in the table. Now, let's save the result by closing the edit session and saving to disk. I'll repeat this process for the DB37 connector on the left, although I won't burden you with seeing every last scan that I do with this probe. With our map complete, return to the cable I main program, choose custom pin map from the connectors menu, and then choose the name of our map from the Maps menu. Now with the cable attached and the map active, click Test Cable to see the final result. I'll highlight a few wires to check the wiring against the schematic. We would use exactly the same process to configure any custom interface to cable I including cables with three or more connectors and wiring harnesses.